Hello everyone, my name is Marsha Nuts, and today I'm going to share some bracelet tips or life hacks that I've picked up over the years. So I originally got an idea to make a video like this from a YouTuber called Aquarelio, and I'll leave her video similar to this one linked in the description down below. But first of all, her channel is in Russian, so not all of you can understand, and second of all, I feel like I have some life hacks to add to the conversation, so I thought I'd do a video like this of my own. And before we get started, I know you guys are gonna ask, the pattern for this bracelet will be linked in the description, and the string that I'm using here is the Alitsa string, and I also have a video discussing that that will also be linked. But that said, let's get into the five bracelet hacks that I have for today. So let's say you've got a bit of embroidery floss that you want to unwrap and maybe put on bobbins. So they usually come in these eight meter strands like so. You could just find the end and start pulling on it, but you might end up creating knots in the center and it will be much more difficult to unwrap. What I recommend is that you take off the paper and once you do that, you can sort of start seeing that there is a very clear center to the scheme. And if you unwrap your string, based on that center, you end up with just like a circle of string. You can put your hand through it, put it on your wrist, and then start unwinding. And then the string literally just unwinds off your wrist, making it much easier and resulting in no knots. You can easily wrap that onto a bobbin. Now let's talk about fastening your bracelet onto a pillow. To do that, I usually use a safety pin. However, I've seen people get confused about how to use safety pins. Some people put their safety pins like this into the loop, but then the bracelet isn't really secured. It's really wobbly. I've seen people try to pierce the loop to get a better hold and a variety of other ways. What I like to do is I like to make three incisions with my safety pin. For that, I usually use a longer safety pin so I have more of the pin to work with. And I usually make an incision right before the loop, then in the center of the loop, and right after the loop. And then I just close off the pin. That way the bracelet isn't actually pierced through, but it's still a very strong hold. This is how I pin all of my bracelets down whenever I have a loop. So a tip for faster knotting. Apart from segment knotting, which is a great technique that helps you knot faster, and I do have a tutorial completely separate on that that will be linked in the card and in the description, when I am knotting, and that is usually segment knotting, I like to fan out my strings when I have multiple knots made with the same string. Let me demonstrate. So here, according to my pattern, I need to make forward knots with this string onto one, two, three, four, five of the next strings following it. So that is a few knots that I can do in one go. The thing that generally slows down knotting is the fact that you have to switch between strings while you're knotting. That is why the segment knotting method allows you to knot faster since you're not switching your strings as often as you do in the row by row method. But even when you do have multiple strings to knot on, even using segment knotting, that can still take a lot of time unless you fan out your strings like I'm gonna show you now. So if I do forward knots, I usually do them with my right hand. So I take my left hand and I put a string into each finger as I'm going along. So here I have one string left out because there's five strings and I only have four fingers. But by putting each string into each finger, I can fan them out, separating them. So I can just go ahead and make forward knots onto these strings without having to separate them again while I'm making the knots. It makes the process of knotting so much easier and so much faster. Of course, if you have more than four strings, as I did here, the fifth string you'll still have to separate. But nonetheless, the first four strings were very simple and easy to do because I fanned them out first, instead of having to switch for every single one. So sometimes, especially when you're knotting with quite a lot of strings, the ends of the strings, since they're pretty long, can get really tangled up. And you guys keep asking me, what do I do to keep my strings untangled? There's not much that you can do to keep your strings untangled. They're long, there's a lot of them, they're gonna get tangled. However, you don't need to untangle them every single time. For example, my pattern calls for this string doing a bunch of backward knots in a row, just like we did here a minute ago. I don't need to untangle all of these strings or all of these strings or any other string except for this one, really. This is the only string that I'm gonna be using at this moment, so this is the only string that I need to untangle. So all I do is I pull on the string very carefully, separating it from this bunch here. 
Now, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you get a really big knot, but you don't have to untangle all of them. You just need to take out the one. And then, as I demonstrated previously, you can just fan out your strings and make knots with the string that you took out. These strings don't even have to be untangled. And last but not least, working with metallic thread or just thread that has a metallic element such as this Alice yarn which is sparkly and has a metallic strand in it can be really annoying. As you can see the metallic thread has a tendency to separate into individual strands and that can be a real hassle while knotting and can get in the way. What I like to do is I like to tie a tiny little knot at the end of the string. just like so. That prevents the string from separating, keeps it all in one strand, and makes it much easier to work with. If you want a detailed tutorial on basic knots, I do have that available where I go over how to make this knot, but I assume that most of you know how to do that. And same with this one. Because this string has a metallic element, you can start seeing even here that it starts coming off the main strand, and that can be really, really annoying. So again, I just like to tie a tiny little knot at the very end of the strand, like so, keeping both of the strands together and making sure that they're usable. So there you go, those are my five hacks or five tips that I had to share with you today. Now I have plenty more where that came from, so if you want a part two, please let me know, because I'm very open to doing that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video, I hope it was helpful. There are a lot of these tips that don't really fit into a video, so I decided to put them all together in one and talk about them in this format. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters, who are Jane, Zoe, Tia, Nicole and Izzy. Thank you guys so much for your support and if you also want to become a patron there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations. I post videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays and sometimes I also post bonus videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!